you. Lay off, will you? Come on, I just got through fixing it. Okay. Did you do your homework? Great bike. Yeah. Yeah, go get me the number five for the carburetor. This is a five. You need a six for that. I mean, he's right. The coffee. So I'm cured. Ow! What'd you do? Burn yourself again? How many times have I told you, for Christ's sake? You use a dish rag and you won't get burned, okay? Ah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> it sure was. I can forget sometimes, too, you know. That's enough. You sure? Uh-huh. Make this fresh today? I did. Just like you wash your socks in there. <laughs> okay. Get your books. Your homework done? Huh? Yeah, it's done. Bye, Mom. Stay here until I get back, okay? Oh, Gentlemen, the pleasure's all mine. Commissioner Alden McGreeny is off duty, and he's leaving on his vacation. I'm putting this note here to remind you that my address is the Hotel Aqua Sparta at Vico Equancy. My area code is 0822. I'll put this here. The telephone number is 2530. Just remember, gentlemen, I've worked hard as hell all year, and I don't want to be disturbed now, only in case. 
You find out I've been promoted. <laughs> oh, better yet. If one of you can get me fixed up with, say, Raquel Welch or Sophia Loren, Brigitte Bardot, Ursula Andre. Commissioner, sir. Aren't you going to be making it there? Well, that's an art, you know. So when I go on vacation, I get a woman who won't be boring. <laughs> <laughs> Man, working with you is a pleasure. <laughs> Yes? Commissioner McGreeny, it's for you. See? Oh. There goes my vacation. Yes? Yes, sir. What's taking so long? Hurry up, will you? Want me to call, sir? Son of a bitch. Hello, I'd like to speak to Mr. Filippini. Oh, he's gone out. Well, can I talk to his wife? I'm sorry, she's not here at the moment. So they're both out of the house then, is that right? That's too bad. Who am I talking to, please? The Major Domo. I see. Hmm. Uh, do you have any idea where I could find Mr. Filippini? At his office. It's on Via Magenta. The agenda. I'll go right over to his office. Did you find the other guy? He's got a garage around here. Okay. Mr. Filippini, Commissioner McGreeny of the Mobile Squad wants to see him. Hello? Yes, just a minute. Commissioner McGreeny from the Mobile Squad. Well, Commissioner, I'm very sorry, but Mr. Filippini is in a meeting. May I take a message for him? Oh. He wants to talk to you. He says it's an emergency. Hmm. Well, Commissioner, you may come up. Thank you. Magrini. Yes. You did say mobile squad, didn't you? The mobile squad. Not the tax collector. Uh. Not the tax collector. <laughs> anyway, we don't have anything for him. No, we don't. Commissioner McGreeny. Mr. Filippini? You must be from the Mobile Squad. I'd like to speak to you in private for a moment. Hello. If I may. Lena? Yes, sir. I'll be downstairs. If you need me, you can call me. I'll call you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner. I wanted to tell you that something happened early this morning concerning your family. Something's happened to my family, to my wife, to my son. There's been an accident. Antonio. Yes, but he's unharmed. He's been kidnapped. He's been kidnapped, and this is the way you tell me about it. How? When? Where? Tell me. Ciao, Mario. Ciao.
to your fault. I know that. We all know that. So just uh, go and make yourself a cup of coffee, and uh, I'll call you later. How about the servants? Are they trustworthy? Of course they are, Commissioner. They've all been with us for years. But then, what do you call trustworthy, huh? Is there anyone you can trust these days? I mean those you feel you can trust. Ones who look so innocent and smile at you. Oh, they're the worst. People will do anything for money. I've seen them do anything for money. <laughs> Right. That's one of the boys who was kidnapped. There it is right here in the paper. For All show. right. Take him in to see the commissioner, will you? Mr. Colella is here, sir. Oh, uh, show him in. What do you men understand? This way. Colella, have they told you what they've done to our boys? Oh. <laughs> Tell me, how can men be so mean? Huh? It's so mean, they can't even defend themselves. How can they be so cruel to little boys, huh? Because it leaves a trauma on a child. It, it's a shock he'll never forget for the rest of his life. Yes. He'll remember this horrible experience. Yes, that's and enough, Gracia, that's enough. Just you think the kidnappers are keeping them together? I hope so. Yes, yes, because they kidnapped Gracia. them together and they should stay together. At least Please. they won't be alone. Quite the worst. <laughs> Commissioner McGreeny. Colette. The story's in Yes, that's how I found out. Uh, how's your wife taking all this? My wife's dead. She passed away three years ago. Uh, I'm sorry. Commissioner, I'm sorry. I don't get it. This guy here is loaded. That's why they kidnapped his son. But what the hell can they get from me? I don't have any dough. Uh, well, it looks as if your son tried to help his friend out. I guess they haven't planned yeah. on that. So they kidnapped him, too. I don't think they wanted your son. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't say anything. If they kidnap somebody in my family, you know what I do? I go and call the police, and then I go out and look for them myself. You have to ask yourself because nobody's going to Five ten reporting in. We just found the car on the VL radio. I think so. Gentlemen, this is my lawyer, Mr. Bonanni, Commissioner Magrini, Mr. Mario uh, Colella. Colella. He agrees with me that the police should stay out of it, at least at the present stage of the game. And the same with the press, obviously. Your attorney's opinion doesn't concern us, I'm afraid. There's been a kidnapping and we have to investigate it. Unless my superiors order it not to. Don't worry, Commissioner. We can take care of that problem. I'll make the call myself. Yes? Commissioner, police headquarters. Well? There's no sign of blood. Anything else? I'll be right back. We just found the car. We left it out on the highway. There was nothing in it. It was stolen, of course. Right here in Rome. That's why I told you not to eat. You can never tell what they put in that food. Didn't you see? All I ate was the apple. What could they put in? A drug, you know, to knock us out. Don't worry about it. Try to sleep. I'm going to read one of these. Boy, you look terrible. I wonder what they gave you.
bulletin on the hour. And now back to our music with them. You hear that? His father's got all those houses. What about the other one? His father's got a garage. No money. Why bother with the kid, then? Who the hell knows? Why didn't you ask him this morning? Sure, he'd have told you. Well, what do we do now? Wait for orders. <laughs> that Fabrizio's a smart boy. All he would eat was fruit. Won't give him any more fruit. That's true. Just wait. He'll start eating. If he makes trouble, just give him one of those shots. Don't worry. That'll knock him out. The important thing is for all of us to keep cool. I know it's hard on you, right? And they might keep us waiting like this for another week or two. Another week or two? I'll never be able to stand it. I'll go crazy if we have to wait. Oh, my God. Would you like a whiskey? No, thanks. Here, I'll take it. You're amazing. I don't know how you can stay so calm now. They want me to come begging on my knees before they'll start bargaining, but they don't know me. Well, I do. To you, this whole thing is just another business deal. You, you talk of bargaining as if you were selling one of your buildings. Is it too much to ask of you to act like a father? Yes, yes. Of course, it's all my fault. Well, Elam, I feel as deeply for your boy as for my own son. You're not convinced, are you? Listen to that hypocrite. I've said it to Grazia a hundred times, haven't I? What a splendid boy Fabrizio is. To me, he's like a son, even more so now that fate has united the two boys in this horrible thing. It's better, at least, that they're in this together. I swear to you, before everyone, and you can reproach me, you can reproach me if I fail to do it, that from now on I shall make no distinction between my Antonio and your boy. They've played together, they're going through this thing together, and from now on they will stay together like brothers. You can count on me. I'll take care of his education to the very last cent, no matter what it may cost me. The main thing is to find them alive. You're not at home. Would you mind not calling here, please? The telephone is needed for a family emergency. Not at home. They're never at home. Where the hell are they? You know, they've been out all day. What if they tried to make contact? They'd never find them. Make contact? What the hell are you talking about? You should know better than that. They're going to let them sweat it out two or three days. Sweat it out. You've got to sit here and watch it. That's a bitch. been any previous attempts to kidnap Mr. Filippini's son? No, absolutely not. Can you give us any information on the family's financial situation? I'm well, Mr. Bonani, do you know what sort of ransom they're trying to get? Have you started negotiating with them? Gentlemen, I've told you all I know. We haven't heard from the kidnappers. We're waiting like you are. Have you considered the eventuality that Antonio was not taken for financial motive? Why else then? Revenge? Mr. Filippini has no enemies. You all know his record as a philanthropist, the charities he sponsored. I want you to know he's decided he will not pay any ransom money. Huh? That is correct. Not one cent. Well, that doesn't go for me. I'll sell my garage, everything I own. 
anything to get my son back. The media have been saying Mr. Filippini's worth a fortune, over $50 million. That's irresponsible reporting, and you're all aware of that. The truth of the matter is that the housing industry has been going through a severe crisis, and my client's firm has suffered along with the others. In the past six months, the new credit restrictions have been the cause of bankruptcies, and in order not to go under, as some of his competitors have, Mr. Filippini has been forced to accept promissory notes from almost all the buildings he sold. His cash holdings at the moment are practically nil. Mr. Filippini, aren't you worth close to $30 million? Thirty million? How do you arrive at such a fantastic figure? Do you want to see me ruined? Your readers want the truth. Don't feed them rumors. Who invented this figure of thirty million dollars, huh? We're forgetting the lives of two innocent children may be at stake. You have all the facts now. You may quote us. Our only concern is to see the two boys safely at home with their families and with the kidnappers get in touch with us immediately. They can use any means of communication that suits them. But above all, though, we must be sure before we begin negotiating that Antonio and Fabrizio are well. Any other questions? Thank you for coming. I can't imagine how rude it's like that. Stop. Could I see you for a minute? Would you yes, excuse me? Mr. Bolella. Yes. You own a repair shop, don't you? Yes, I specialize in motorcycles. Any employees? Well, Fabrizio, but he's learning. You mean your son works for you? Isn't he a little young? A little young? What do you mean? He's only 12. Well, if he doesn't get to college, I want him to learn my trade. They called. Yes. Yes, they want one million and a half as a start. Oh. In order to start the bargaining. I know it's them. If it were an imposter, he would have asked for less. Yes, it's true. They called me at home half an hour ago. If they call me back, what do you want me to do? I don't know, but in the meantime, don't mention this to anyone, not even my wife. I'm done, you said one. I told you we're sick and tired of being locked up in here. When are you going to let us go home? Alone, will you? Can't you see he's sleeping? He got sick of that food you gave him. When my father gets here, he'll beat the hell out of you. Every last one of you will beat the hell out of you, you sons of bitches. Oh. In three days now. Why haven't they gotten in touch with us? If it's money they want, why don't they tell us and get it over with? They have the upper hand. Why should they be in a hurry? We're the ones who are in a hurry. I'm tired of all these people telephoning us. I know they're just trying to be kind, but what if the kidnappers call and the line's always busy? They'll find a way. I'll go to the bank tomorrow. I'll uh, make a withdrawal, so... If they do call, why, why, we'll have it ready. Don't bother. I'll take care of it. They're not going to get in touch with us now. They'll take their time and wait for things to cool off a bit. <laughs> it's one of your good Samaritans. Hello. Who? What? That's impossible. <laughs> it was them. There's nothing to be excited about. They asked fifteen million dollars. Hello? Who? Our price is fifteen million dollars. What? We'll give you three days. That's impossible. Fifteen million dollars, you hear that? What about Fabrizio, for Christ's sake? You told me they let him go today. Where the okay. hell is he coming from? Okay, earth? okay. I said to let him go today. So I was wrong, all right? It seemed logical to me. Why should they hold on to it? Your boy isn't worth a red cent. I'm sorry. I was trying to say, I meant as far as that gang was concerned, he isn't worth holding on to. They know you haven't got a penny to your name. The only one they can collect on is Antonio. That's nice, you know. Let me tell you how I feel. That boy's all I've got, and I want him back alive. What the hell are you waiting for, anyway? I'm waiting for orders. Jesus, can't you understand that? Now, look, 
Those guys kidnapped Antonio to get money out of it. How much we know. They're not going to move a finger until they see that ransom money. His son's in no dig. Why don't they let him go? Oh, come on. That's obvious. They're not taking any risks. If they were to let him go now, they're afraid he could tell us where they're keeping Antonio. They're not stupid, you know. They'll release your son and they'll release Antonio Filippini. But Filippini says he won't give them a penny. Don't you realize that's his way of negotiating? Uh, no, he means it. Hell no. When they're through bargaining, you'll see he's going to pay. It's in their own interest to ask for a sum of money that the family's able to pay. And I just have to wait. What happens if Filippini decides not to pay the ransom? What happens then, eh? What happens then? Look, don't get angry with me. What can I do? You want me to tell you what to do? You're the police, not me. This man gave you orders not to do anything. And you haven't done anything. He's not paying, so do something. We're doing the best we can, Colella, trying to move carefully. Why don't you move your ass? We have to move slowly. It's the only way. Because we're trying to save the lives of those two children. That's the one thing that counts. If the police make a move now, it might endanger the lives of... bullshit. Them. Commissioner, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Why don't you admit it? Do you think we've been in here two days? Two days? You must be kidding. It's over a week at least. I'm sure of it. One of two days at most. How do you like that? They stole the wristwatch. Brad knew it. Had a calendar. But that's why they took it away. One of two days. What do you say? Are you crazy? The first day they gave us that cold spaghetti, right? The next day we had fettuccine. Once we had pork and sauerkraut. Then once we had risotto. Then once we had scrambled eggs. The next day was pork stew. The day after that, baked lasagna. You figure it out. We've been in here more than eight days. You mean over a week? You, go over there. He wants to make a recording. Mama, Papa, please. I miss you. Can't you come for me? I don't want to stay here. Hey, you. It's my turn, isn't it? Now I want to speak to my pa. Papa, Papa, come here right away. We'll knock the shit out of them. You hear, Papa? We'll knock the shit out of them, okay? Let me get in touch with you. You tell them that first they've got to describe something that Antonia was wearing when they took him. So that I shall know. In other words, proof. Second, that they ask a less crazy price. That they make me a more human offer. What do they take me for, for Christ's sake? Some sort of a Rockefeller? They're not going to listen to me. If we don't give them a million and a half in advance, they're not going to deal with us. I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to give it to him, and he's going to fly to Zurich with it now, today, and then back here tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow. It's just a question of a few days at the most. And then we'll give them their advance. And what about the police? Can we be sure about them? Oh, there's no problem with the police or the press. I call them. They talked to me about principles. I told them I didn't give a damn about principles. All I wanted was for my boy to get back. And understand, as of now, I'm taking care of it. And you, remember, from now on, the contacts are in your hands. Not a word to anyone, and that means anyone. Not even my wife. You're on holiday. Just shut yourself in your house and don't come out. I'll take care of all the office work. I've been thinking about that poor guy. You know, Colella, it's really a pity. And what about me and my wife? Do you think we're enjoying this? Were there any phone calls since Filippini would negotiate? I keep telling you, there were no telephone calls at his house for the last two days. He must be calling somewhere else. Who the hell knows where? What am I going to do, tap all the phones in the city? Well, do you think they've contacted him? I'm sure of it. Now, look, even if I had proof, I couldn't tell you. Am I right? Wait a second. I'm entitled to know about my son. He might be killed. If they were to contact me, I'd pay. There you go, getting excited. What do you think you'll gain by getting excited? Don't you know that in the last few years, kidnapping has turned into one of our leading industries? I'm sure of it. Good. Now, I want you to look up there at that chart. The last 24 kidnappings, $80 million. Now, that's the amount they tell us. But then there might be the guy who pays ten and says he only paid three. Come on, now, Filippini, he's got the $15 million. How can you be so sure of that? Have you seen his bank account? Do you really know? I don't know. Then don't say it. Maybe he's bankrupt now. I just told you, you have to look at these kidnappings like a business in its own right, like an industry. The men doing this are just like a new kind of executive. They're not like the old-fashioned kidnappers. They're respected businessmen. We go out chasing kidnappers, but we never get to the big boss. 
Those men are too clever for me. There are guys in the government protecting them. And those very same people call me up here and tell me that if I don't catch some little crook, they're going to transfer me to Calabria or some other hellhole. Get out of the way, will you? Now, look, I want to tell you something. Nobody I know who ever made a payoff. Oh, 10 or 15 million dollars had to close his business and go into bankruptcy. Can you explain that? I don't know how the hell they do it. Do they have some kind of magic formula that you and I don't know about? I'm telling you, I never saw anyone who paid four or five billion dollars and said I paid off and I'm completely ruined now. I never saw it. I don't get Filippini. I can't understand the man. I mean, Commissioner, if I had 20 or 30 million dollars, I would have had that ransom paid off the, the minute they contacted me. Colella, you'd do anything to save your boy. You'd go hungry if you had to. He's not like that. He is negotiating. And he's playing with the boy's life. Yes? Who is it? Who is it? You're a born businessman. You're dragging things out because you don't want to pay! What are you talking about? They're supposed to call us again to discuss the procedure, and they haven't done so. Why don't you believe me? You would know if they called, since you stay in the house all day long. You're not fooling me. You're capable of bargaining, even when your son's life is at stake. I won't have you talk to me like that. Yes, yes, I'll talk like that because I know what I'm saying. You're out of your mind. You can't even follow a... said to keep waiting. Keep waiting for orders. Is that all they can tell us now? That's it. They said wait and don't do anything on your own. What do they want us to keep waiting for? A goddamn police? Fifteen without any guarantees. They must be crazy. What is this? Some kind of a poker game or something? All right. Well, I can play poker as well as they can. But if I have to lead off with a million and a half, it's not going to be like this. If I give in too quickly, they're going to think that all I have to do is to go outside and Pick it off the trees. Then they're going to ask for 25 instead of 15, and I shall go, at the most, three. And what's more, I shall let them sit tight and wait for another two or three days. What was that? Two or three days, you said? Oh, you must be out of your mind. You pay them off right now. We are merely discussing me? a procedure for handing over the money. Don't lie. I heard you. You're going to make them wait for their money. Now, listen to me. If you don't turn over that ransom right now, I'll put an ad in the newspapers. Telling the kidnappers to get in touch with me personally, I'll pay them. I'll pay $15 million or even 20. <laughs> I just want my son back. This housing business, it was my family that got my husband started in it. Yes, it's true. He started it with my dowry. That surprises you, doesn't it? I want my son now. You pay them off now. It doesn't make sense. If they know that the bank marks the ransom money, then why do they take it if they know it can be traced? I don't understand. You see, the men who do the actual kidnapping yeah. are just small fry. Understand? Yes, I know. Now, the guys who organize it are very well connected, even politically. Oh, they're really sharp operators. They know how to unload marked banknotes. That money they get from Filippini, eh? Goes to Switzerland. And returns to Italy, but it comes back as brand new investment capital. They might even use it to buy stock from Filippini. He'd never know it was his own money. Yeah, I get all that, but what's it got to do with me? I want my son. Jesus, can't you do something about it? Take it easy, will you? I've been telling you, our hands are tied. Besides, Fabrizio's okay. You heard that recording, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I told you you'd get him back when they released the Filippini kid. 
I'll get him back when they release the Filipini kit. But that's the problem. I've got to sit and wait around until Mr. Filipini decides whether to pay or not to pay. Now, if he doesn't pay, what the hell do I do? Now, come on. He's negotiating. Now, screw his negotiating. Huh? That's his right. Oh, what about mine? I know how you feel, but if he wants to negotiate... He's playing with my son's life. Do you realize that? During the election campaign next year. Rome. There is still no news of the whereabouts of Antonio Filippini and Fabrizio Colella. The two boys abducted over a week ago at the entrance to their school. The car used by the kidnappers was found near the... Something funny's going on. I can't figure out this Filippini. This man got back from Switzerland. The money's been ready for three days now. You think he's working with the police? No, he wouldn't pull that now. The police are at it. Then what the hell is he waiting for? He pays off and he gets his son. Let him have another two days, okay? If he doesn't pay up by then, we'll show him we're not fooling. Yes? Oh, was it you who called before? No, I didn't call you, Lena. Look, the phone, the phone just rang twice. Wasn't that you calling? They must have called you. They want to check to see you're there. No, no. Try, try to string them along another few days. Think of an excuse, Lena. He wants three more days. His top price is five million now. I know, I know, but he just won't listen. You know the way Filipini is. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Goodbye. happened to be passing by. I thought I'd drop in and have a little talk with you. Well, what's on your mind, Commissioner? Oh, nothing much. It's for Fabrizio. My son's got one, too. Let's hope he can play with it pretty soon. Don't worry, he will. To tell you the truth, I feel kind of lost in here without Fabrizio. You know, it's like... It's like when my wife died years ago. I had to stop racing then. And, well, I was, I was pretty good, too. But Fabrizio needed me. So I said, why the hell with bike racing? My kid was more important. And I think I did the right thing. I've been, I've been doing what I could all these years so Fabrizio wouldn't miss his mother. And look what happens. Tell you, Commissioner, I like to get my hands on those bastards. I... I feel helpless. They take my son away, and I can't get him back. The fact is, they kidnapped him nearly two weeks ago, and we don't know a goddamn thing. Is he okay? What do we do? Will they let him go? No, nothing. The police aren't doing a thing, just waiting for a miracle. Oh, well, uh, the police have been ordered to stay out of it. Who ordered you? You know, Filipini and the kidnappers. I didn't order you. I know, I know. Commissioner, do you think... Do you have the impression that they're negotiating right now? and that they might release the kids. You would tell me if you had news about my son, wouldn't you? You know, I can't go on like this much longer. Poor Fabrizio, he might be dead by now. Try not to worry. I try not to worry. Commissioner, I want to know if there's, if there's any hope now. Colella, you've got to try not to worry. You know that Filippini is influential. He has men in the ministries and the banks. They're his friends. Now he's lawyer. That Bonani. I tell you, if I could only find out what Mr. Bonani was up to, I would know where we stood at this point. Was the same voice on the phone? I'm not really sure it was. He sounded sort of different. What did he say to you? Do you remember? He said for us... for us to get morning clothes. Is that all? Lena! My God, what else did he have to say, huh? We'll go six million, but not a cent more. Yes, six million. I'll let you know when they call. <laughs> Come on. 
Come in, come in, Colel. Uh, I've seen you lately. It's just as well you came today, because I think, fortunately, things are now beginning to move. I'm sure you can understand that I had to keep quiet, move cautiously. This is very delicate, and it'd take almost nothing to blow the whole thing. Why haven't you paid yet? I'm trying to explain. This is a deal just like any other, and as such, I've got to handle it. You can treat our children's lives like a business deal? These people are asking for $15 million. Do you realize what sort of money that is? No, I don't know how much it is. All I know is that I'm ready to sell everything I've got, and you do the same thing, and we'll save our two children. It's easy enough for you to say I'll sell everything. You have nothing. I'm going to save, Antonio, but I'm not about to pay any $15 million. Oh, no. <laughs> I'd never be able to put that sort of money together in so short a time. So I've, I've made a counteroffer. Five million, clean, both boys, free, both boys, I told those little shithead crooks. That's beautiful. And what was their answer? They're not stupid. Don't give in. They ain't just as much of a hurry to have to wrap this thing up as you are. Yes, of course. All right, we'll wait another couple of days. But maybe things won't turn out exactly the way you think. <sighs> are you doing this? Hasn't he paid yet? I mean, who's going to do it? Well, you calm down. I'll take care of everything. But why? Beautiful place here. No other houses around. I'll take care of what has to be done. Go get the boy. the two boys was I'll come right away. Something's happened to him. Filippini, please. It's urgent. Commissioner McGreeny, that's right. There's news. Wait for me. I'll come by for you. I'm sorry. I can't talk on the phone. I'll be right there. Yes, that's right.
I'm sorry, I... Really... You and your bloody money. You kill him with your fucking money. No, I... With your bloody money. Get out. Get out. Uh, look, Get out. Look, look, please, I, I... Go away. Go away.
Can I help you? I'd like the owner's address. What? Eight, eight, zero, four, five. Aqua. Mm -hmm. Did you hear? They killed one of those two kids that was kidnapped. Which one? The poor one, not that rich kid. When did they find him? The radio said around four o'clock in the morning. I think. You think the other one's still alive? Sure he is. They've got a lot of money riding on him. The paper said around fifteen million dollars, I think. Why'd they kill the other one? To scare the rich kid's father. That's what they think. He was stalling. They thought he wouldn't pay. How he will, though. Huh. Bet your life he will. Yeah. Why do you want his address? Yeah. Oh, he can save at school. Uh, this has been an accident. And your old man's got a lot of money. This kid's Car's owner is. Doruta. Listen, I Carlo Antonio. Clear of the rich one. He lives in Baldio. The end of Carmody 3. Am I in your way? No. Beautiful car you got. Is it yours? Yeah. Am I in your way? No. What are you doing in here? Antonio, look out, can't you see the man's crazy? It'll be all right, don't worry. <laughs> what is it? I had a son, too. He was older than yours. Is that what you came up here to tell me? I want the men who killed him. Then what are you doing here? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'll explain it. You couldn't collect on him. The only reason you might have had for killing him was so you could scare Filippini. To make sure he'd pay. I told you, Antonio, he's crazy. I told you not to worry. I want the truth now. Or I start with the kid. And then she gets it. I swear you're mistaken. Why do you come to me? The money they got. They used your car when you took delivery. But that's impossible. It was yours. Oh, my God. But I didn't use it all day, so help me, I had that car here in the garage. You can ask the man who runs the place. The truth, or I'm going to shoot. No, no! You got ten seconds, so talk. It's all my fault. Piero asked if he could borrow the car. I know that you don't want him to use it. Who is this Piero? My wife's brother. Where is he now? He usually hangs out at the bar near the church. Just ask for Piero and have it out with him. Now go away and leave us alone. I said leave us alone! Piero, Don Antonio's brother-in-law. Hey, you want anything to drink? I'll be closing up soon. This early? Okay. I'll have a beer. That's 300 lira. Thank you. 
I'll have a brandy. Hold it. Where's Piero? Is he out there? Who's he? I don't even know this guy. You don't? Outside. Hey, look, you got the wrong man. I tell you, I never heard of this Piero. Go ahead. And don't make any false moves. Out. Brony organized the whole thing. He's the man I just, the one I hit with the car. He was hired. We both were. We followed orders. We didn't know who we were working for. We didn't want to kill your kid. You got to believe me. But then the orders changed. We had to get him ready for that bastard, the guy from Milan. He killed him. His name. His I don't, name, I said. I don't know. His name.
hasn't shown up. I left the man outside his garage. That's a good boy. Figurini. Please get these two letters signed right away and put the official seal on them. How are things going? What do you expect? He just called me now to give us our authorization. We can proceed. Commissioner, why can't the law really get tough when there's a kidnapping? You'd have to start out with the parents as soon as the child gets kidnapped. Block the telephone lines, then threaten the father and mother with a jail sentence. A really tough one. The same one they give the kidnappers. 30 years. You get my point? Better stop kidnappings. Well, I just don't see things that way. You know what the trouble is? That there are people in this country who won't let the police investigate kidnappings. As long as that kind of situation exists, then the police are helpless. New laws won't change it. There will always be kidnappings. Commissioner, what do you want, a revolution? No. I just want you to find Kalela. Because if I were in that man's shoes, I'd make waves. Try right, back in a little further. Hello, I've been sent here to pick up those two sacks. Help yourself, they're right there. heading. We were following the milk truck. Where to? You at? To Milan. What next? Highway. Troll gate. What next? I'm not sure. We had to follow the milk truck. Milan troll gate. Something must have gone there on. he is. See him? Right. Let's go.
What do you see in there? A motorcycle. Those are a machine pistol. Your witnesses, then. I opened the door, and you saw exactly what was inside. Nothing else, right? Uh-uh. You! Out. All right, what's going on? His memory. you put the sacks. You didn't expect to get away with those sacks, did you? You're gonna talk, fathead. I'll talk to you alone. What do you mean? You heard. I want to talk to you alone. Out. I'm not a drink driver. I'm the father. That kid, that kid you killed. That's right. Yeah, my son was killed. Then why did you let me trap you this way? You didn't trap me. I wanted to meet you. That's why I'm in Milan. What for? To talk over some business. I thought of a deal. I feel pretty safe with you. I'm the only one who knows where the dough is. You'd better treat me real nice. If you ever want to see that money. What do you want? Half the money. That's the deal. You can take it or leave it. You get half the money. The rest is all mine. You're a very clever guy. There's one other detail. I know they marked the notes. The police said so. I want my share all clean. You take the money. I'll get mine without markings. Mm -mm. I don't even know why we're talking. The men I work for are loaded. Why the hell should they split the ransom money because it's marked? They have ways of laundering it. You don't. Understand? If you don't come down in price, there's no you start talking anymore. If you're a little more reasonable, I'll make a call. How about it? Can't you decide yourself? I thought you made the big decision. <laughs> You're going to have to make the big decision now. And you know why? Because I'll go and telephone. If they decide to forget the money and close the operation, you keep those sacks you stole. But you won't walk out of here alive. Get me? Okay. Hey, uh... Treat the man real nice. He's a good friend of mine. All right? Hold on a second. What do you think? Why the hell should we take any chances? Get rid of him now and screw the ransom. Wait a minute. We can try to explain what happened. But what if they don't believe us? You know how they are. I'm sure they'll believe me. I'm not a beginner for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's right. Offer them a million, no markets, clean and switching them. A million dollars to a son of a bitch like that, it's a fortune. Am I right? I'm sure you'll be glad to get it. So for once, instead of 90, our guys will get 80%. What do you mean? We killed his son, his only child. You believe that all he wants to talk to us about is money? Man, you're crazy. I tell you, that boy's gunning for us. He's not negotiating. Don't worry. If he's looking for trouble, we can take him on. I hope you're right. Go ahead with our plan. Come here. They said we can start talking. I want to talk to them personally. Stop wasting time. I'm doing the negotiating. How much do you want? I won't negotiate with you. You're just small fry. 
You're not being reasonable. Well, I'm not reasonable. I want to talk to the guys who make decisions. You're just a little guy. Why don't you tell me where I can find the men who really run the show? Where are you staying in Milan? Tell me so I can reach you. Okay. There you go. You're the one who killed my son. I don't know why you won't tell me the truth. Why did they kill Fabrizio? Mind the wheel wasn't alone in the car. We are sure of that, because we found bloodstains on the road not too far away. He had a pretty long record, but we don't think he'd ever been involved in a kidnapping before, at least as far as we know. Commissioner, there's still no trace of the other car. The tire marks indicate it could have been a delivery oh, van. We've got no file on that guy they hit with the car, or on Matrella, the one we found in the barn they used as a hiding place. Sir, we're trying to get the dead girl identified. There's nothing so far. No one even knows her name. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. thing is certain, they were holding the ransom money, sir. The license plates check out. Mm. At least according to Filipini's lawyer. That's if he's telling the truth, which I don't believe. But our lab reports show the tire marks are exactly like the ones leading to the barn where they were holding the kids. Commissioner, they're the same marks. I'm pretty sure it's the car they used. I know it. We're forgetting something, aren't we? What about the guns? The numbers on the guns are illegible, but the rifles are okay. They're both registered. So what? Matrella had a hunting license, didn't he? Commissioner Magrini, what's your opinion? What do I think? No. Look, we got four dead bodies. And one other guy who got away. Two cars have been stolen, and they've disappeared. We have a couple of handguns with the numbers filed off. There's a woman we can't identify. Two of the guys had never been arrested. It's the biggest mess I've ever come across in 25 years. So what the hell can I say to you? Just because I'm Commissioner Aldo Magrini, am I supposed to understand more than you guys? It's ridiculous. <sighs> I'll be there. Now remember, don't try to screw me. One false move and it's off. Ciao. Do you know your way around, Milan, sir? Yes. I used to go out here to race. Have a nice day. Negotiate with me. I don't want to. Huh? I told you, you're a messenger. The answer is no. I want to deal with your boss, a man who gives the orders. I said you'll negotiate with me. I just told you no. Not because I don't like your face. I want to talk to the guys who give the orders, and nothing's going to stop me. And if they still want their money, they're going to have to negotiate directly. That's my offer. Is it clear to you now? They told me to find out what your final offer was before they'll negotiate. I want guarantees. And I'm not going to deal with you. I want to see you faces. The big shots. Well, don't worry. I'm sure I know how to deal with this guy. I can get him to take less. No. No, I just don't agree with you. Too bad. From now on, all I'll do is keep an eye on him. Better have things all set before you send the other man down. Okay. Okay. I understand. All I do now is stay out of the way and keep an eye on the guy because he's very important. That's right. Yes? I'm not handling the deal anymore. Who is handling it? 
How will I know who it is? You'll have a password. Two ties and a yellow shirt. You've got to answer green. You got that? I'm not deaf. See you later. Mr. Colella. Nina. Can I talk to you? I'm sorry, I can't. I was waiting for someone. I don't have any time now. Yes, I know. I think you were waiting for me. Two ties and a yellow shirt. Two ties and a yellow shirt? Two ties and a yellow shirt? Ideas in that little bird brain of yours. What did you say? I told him the truth, that's all. Fortunately, you don't know that much. Anyway, what was his reaction? I want the truth, too. Do you understand? He's a bastard like you are. All he's thinking about now is money. <laughs> he's no fool. He'll get what he's after, all right. Your next job? So call our friends and let them know what Colella's price is. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Remember, don't be late now. Uh, uh, one other thing. I want our friend kept in the dark, don't forget. You wouldn't try anything funny now, would you? Ciao.
Come in, gentlemen. He's here in Milan. We're having him watched. How are the negotiations going? He still wants half the money. Clean, in Switzerland. But I think he's bluffing. If we want to go as high as two or three million, I'm sure he'll settle for it. One thing's sure, if Lilla's in this thing for the money, he wants his share. It's a big risk. I'm of the same opinion. At this point, we have to decide. We have Party, who's been in this right from the beginning, watching every move Colella makes. Please, won't you sit down? Right. Thank you. Would you like anything else? Mm -hmm. No, I told you that seven was too much. They said so. I hope you realize how much I've done. I've convinced them. Convinced who? This. How many times have I told you I don't know who they are? All I've ever done is to talk to them on the phone, that's all. Then who do I negotiate with? You negotiate with me. That's what we're doing, negotiating. Then when we finish, you can talk to anyone you like, but don't ask me who they are because I don't know. You said you'd convince them. Now, I'm just what exactly? I convinced them that you're someone they can trust and that they should go on negotiating. All right, there's one other thing now. I've been thinking. I asked for seven million. That's about half the ransom money. Now, I could settle for less if I could meet with them right away and settle the whole thing personally. What I want is to close the deal now, okay? Sure, I get your point. If you want me to tell them that, I will. What next? They told me to tell you, tomorrow at 12 o'clock, go to the office of the Institute of International Financing. The address is Via Como 8. Say you want to see the director. Who is he? God, I don't know. Just go in and ask. Ask for the man in charge. Listen to what the director has to say to you. If you know how to handle yourself, tomorrow you walk out with the money you want. So I go to the Institute of International Finance, the Acomo 8, 12 noon. Yes. I'm sorry, I have to leave. Do I confirm it? Confirm it. So long. What are you doing here? Do you mind if I go upstairs with you? Go up there? What for? I thought I might be able to help you. Okay. Let's go. Mr. Colella is here, sir. All right, Francesco. Show him in. Gentlemen, Let's get back to the business we were just discussing, the Filippini case. I think we've reached the moment of truth. Wouldn't you agree? Certainly. To sum things up, then, in order to assure the success of the operation, we had to kill his son. I don't think Colella wants to negotiate. Then why don't we eliminate him at once? As soon as we get him off his guard, the 15 million can be written off as a loss, but at least that way we can be sure that a potential troublemaker is out of the way. Well, let's hear him out. If you wish, we can hear him out. This way, Mr. Colella. Have a seat, won't you? We are very pleased to hear that you're interested in investing in our company, Mr. Colella. Our field office informs us that your credit references are good, so why don't we get down to business? That's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, Mr. Colella, I would like to begin with a question. Could you tell us uh, the exact amount you were planning to invest in our company? One of our directors has informed us that the figure you'd mentioned was $7 million. Actually, that's slightly higher than the amount we've been considering. I would say... 
two, or at the very most, two and a half. Here's the highest we can go at this point. You must be aware of all the bank charges our concern will have to pay. We'd also like you to give us some idea of how the money will get here. How are you planning to transfer this uh, large sum of money? It's only a detail, of course. You see, Mr. Colella, the board wants to know how you plan to bring this new investment capital to Milan. Perhaps I haven't made myself clear. Where are these funds now? Where are you hiding this money? <laughs> I burned it. the one who gave the order to kill my son. Uh, what difference does it make? You've just killed all the bosses. Oh, the man who gave the orders is dead. Oh! Thanks a lot. That's just what I wanted to know. You're the one who killed my son. When one of us is given the order to kill, you can't blame him for it. I've been forced to kill a lot of guys, but I saw to it they never suffered. You're not a professional. Why don't you finish me off? The coup de grace. Well, go ahead. <laughs> like when you turn off the light. Go! 
Come on, what are you waiting for? Shoot me in the neck like I did. Here, son. 